Today I am trying my hand at using Mod Podge for a weathering technique and creating a faux leather hand grip using blue shop towels. Here I'm cutting up some PVC pipe and trimming it with my deburr tool. I'm going to glue everything together using two-part epoxy. It seems to work very well for me when I'm gluing 3D printed parts together. My finished grip will be about three feet long, two 18 inch pieces, made up of three six inch pieces each. Because I'm covering this with blue towels, I'm just loosely lining up the grips. It is a helicoil um, in the print, and when lined up, it looks really nice. And I think the blue hand towel method worked well for me, as you'll see throughout this video what I did. If you do a lot of 3D printing, I do recommend getting a deburr tool. It comes in very handy. So using blue hand towels is uh, new to me, so I went and picked up a brand new roll. This is something I've never done before. I use Mod Podge for covering stuff, but not to actually do this. Of course, I borrowed the idea from the smuggler's room, which we all seem to do. The whole goal was to get as much into the seam of the helicoil that I created in my print. It was not a big deal to me that if it, it had seams or creases because it, I wanted it to look weathered and old. Uh, if I was to do this again, I would definitely wear gloves. I think I spent just as much time getting the Mod Podge off my hands after doing these two as I did putting it on both of them. I was actually very happy with the way it lapped over itself. I'll be using this technique again on other things. This jar of Mod Podge happens to be probably three, four years old. Um, I forget what I even originally bought it for, but it's been in a box for a long time, and it's still in good, good usable condition. So I left the ends. I just kind of ripped off a little bit of excess and then set it aside to dry and started on the next one. After patching a little issue there, I used a little bit of water to uh, help loosen up a spot that started to dry on me already. Again, the goal wasn't perfection, it was to make it look old, so all the fixing you see there was me trying to just make sure it was stuck to the plastic, not perfect. So for the second one I decided to try a different little method where instead of rolling one long piece along the edge, it, I kind of wrapped it. It went a lot quicker. It was a lot easier to get it together. Set those two aside. And you can see here now I've moved on to Trying my hand at the leathering technique. I used Mod Podge the way a lot of people use toothpaste or mustard or even latex. I was thinking this may be similar to latex. 
it worked, but um, I think you need to lay it on thicker so it's easier to take it off. I put it on a little too thin. Next, I went back to the handles and started painting. Uh, using a air gun is new for me, so you'll see a lot of bad mistakes. I'm wearing a mask while doing this and I also have a fan blowing out of the garage while I'm working. This is just Mars black paint which I used as an undercoat and like I said I'm still learning. It, it was fun playing with it and I want to learn a lot more about using the air gun airbrush but it Definitely not something that I am definitely good at yet. But I have a lot of projects which will give me a lot of practice. The white bottle that you see is a thinner of sorts that helps the paint stretch out, go longer, and uh, flow quicker. paints that I had this seemed to help out quite a bit when I got done painting the first one I then went to a bird sienna brown and started painting over the I'm sorry when I got done with the second one I went to back to the first one with brown and you can see here I started to have some issues with the, the nozzle brown over the black lighting doesn't really do it justice but it really started to give it like this leather to leather look a future project is to create a paint booth for myself but um, I'm not in a place to be able to do that right now so look forward to seeing that in a future video so after I got these painted set them aside to dry for a couple hours and I started to paint the head of the axe again going back to black the Mod Podge has dried by now on most of the spots you'll see a couple of wet spots that actually helped me in those spots when it came to scraping off the paint and trying to give it a leather look and or a chipped look. I probably should have pre-sanded a little bit onto the silver on the axe because the black paint seemed to not want to stick in the beginning. I don't know if it was the uh, stuff I was using to thin it out or if it was the plastic. So I'm going to blame the plastic for now. For those who think airbrushing is a scary thing, it was the same for me, but once I started doing it, it seemed like it was real easy to do and it was worth the effort. You should just give it a try. And if you've made it this far in the video and would like to subscribe, that would be great. Now I just took a exacto knife and found the spots where the Mod Podge was and the paint just came up real easy in most of the spots. A couple of the spots it was a little tough because the Mod Podge was thin and it dried really quick. So if you want to try using Mod Podge, definitely go thicker rather than thin.
This is the second axe of uh, my collection. The first one I did a couple of years ago. Um, my goal is to recreate uh, the Dryden Voss den area where the Rally Master Mandalorian costume is with the two axes. So I started with the axes and I will be working on the Rally Master armor soon. Now I'm putting the two candles together, which is pretty straightforward. Then I decided to just do a simple wrap of paracord around the top. It was a lot harder to do with the axe already the axe head already glued in place. I should have thought about that before I put it in place, but it was an afterthought. I wasn't even sure if I'd have enough paracord to get this done because I just happened to have that piece with that length that I had and it was close, but it, you'll see here I have a little gap that I kind of left because I was afraid I wouldn't have enough space. Um, but I ended up actually being able to finish what I wanted to do here. And I think it gives it kind of a, a nice look. And it's just held in place with a, a dab of hot glue on each end. Here I'm fixing the little extra space. And here's the dried leather grip. I think it looks pretty cool. And the finished head. Thank you for watching.